This is my plan. This is where my chop used to sit all the time. Now it sits here and I can't get through the slider. So I'm bringing it in here. I'm kind of... I don't know, anyway, let me ramble on. This is what always happens. As soon as I almost finish with something, I don't like it. Why? Um, because, um, I don't know. I'm always dissatisfied. Um, can I pinpoint it? No. I think what it is, is because the project's done, and that's what I do. As far as taking this truck and driving around and shows and stuff, no, that's not me. Um, look, see the dust, man? I gotta put some control stuff down in the alley to keep the dust down. It's like these bikes. That sets. Even if that started, I wouldn't got a battery. That just sets. This is gonna set. Basically, if you guys live in the alley like I do, if you buy this stuff, this is what I gotta do today. Oh. It's like a dowel flake. You put it down in the alley and um, you put water on it, it keeps the dust on a lot. Because the natives drive like a mad dog. Um, I think, like I said, it's not that I dislike the vehicle, it's just um, I'm more into working on stuff. Um, I don't really take time to enjoy stuff. This kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Make a long story short, I lost $5,771.11 on a body shop because it wasn't grandfathered in. Okay, that's fine. This is what I got to look at almost every day. The gentleman that bought a truck, see that yellow one? Right there? I used to own that. $5,771.11 when I sold it. And I dropped it on a body shop, but that's a whole nother story. This is what it looked like when I got it. I had to replace the fender. I reskinned the box. This is what it looked like when it was done. And that's the box. This is the worst parts of it. I bought a tailgate, but the frame, I had to put a half a frame on it. And this is where it got hit. That was crinked in the um, pasture side. And this is how I fixed it. This is the best that door could close when I got it because it was at a dead stop when it got rear ended. I don't know at what speed. And I pulled it out. And this is how I pulled it out. See, this is, this is the best the door would close when you slam it. And that's the best I could get it. There's the back of the cab. And what I did is I drilled holes through it, put a chain, and, and, and drove away and kept a tree, hooked it to a tree and kept pulling it out. And then I mudded it in. Now there's my old lady Sporty that she laid down. See all them dents? They were quite big. And that's her Sporty now. But anyway, um, you know, it's kind of hard when you make a mistake in life and throw money away. The city screwed me on the body shop because it was a body shop. Then they said it wasn't grandfathered in because it closed. It used to be called DC Collision. It closed for two years. And then, and then when I bought it, you know, they want to, uh, uh, I don't know what year. This is probably about three or four years ago. They want me to buy a brand new spray booth, brand new um, fire suppressant system. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? Um, I ain't painting shit today, okay? Ain't painting shit never because you fuckers ain't got no money anyway. Anyway, that's a truck and I have to look at it. And it's a constant reminder that it's one thing to make a mistake, but it's another thing to see a constant reminder. It's just I know that money, I threw it away on a body shop that the city fucked me. Anyway, my point being is I got a neighbor across the street. He's got a 77 Regal that um, he had quoted here in town. It's got about, it needs like, I don't know, four patches. You know. What's time do I got?
Anyway, I like working on shit. It needs uh, a couple packs of stuff, and in town I got quoted for $6,500. That was the lowest quote. I quote them $4,300. Um, maybe that's high, maybe that's low, but I know what everybody else quoted. Um, and then he, he, he's a nice guy, I like him a lot. But then he says, can you do it for 35? And I told him no. No, I ain't gonna do it. And that was last year. Well, I just pulled my truck around just to rinse the dust off, because I'm gonna um, wet sand down in the back bay. And he comes over and talking about getting his car painted. They wanted his, he should have had his car painted. And I said, you, you could have had it painted down. You shouldn't use his name, but anyway, you got money. Um, basically says he has no money. That's what I mean around here. 4,300 compared to everybody else was quoting 65, and that was the lowest thing. And I had, I'd have to dump it anyway. Um, that's why I'm bringing my chop in. Um, could I use the money? Yeah, I could use money. I always use money, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna work for free. This ain't gonna. And you got a few people out there saying about stroke my ego. This ain't nothing about stroking Tommy Shoe's ego, trust me. You guys think Tommy Shoe got an ego? Okay, that's fine. Um, I see a guy out there on a video. He needs some help. Now I'm gonna show you what to do and what not to do. Whack and grease remover, do not take it out of a Tupperware jug. Trust me, people. Use it out of a spray bottle, because when you when you put it in a Tupperware jug and you dab, dab the rag in there and you pull it back out, you're taking a chance of getting dirt. Anyway, this is what I see the guy doing. Before you even try to prime or paint anything, hang a piece of paper on the wall and test your gun. Do not start spraying and test. You know, that's wrong. Okay, here's another thing. Maybe people don't understand this. He started spraying in the center of his hood. It started coming back. And then by the time he gets over here, it's, you're gonna blow dry over spray over it. It's called a push-pull. You, you start spraying like this. You start at one side of the hood, and what they call it is pushing it. And when you get so far, you stop. See the dust? And then you come back and you're, you're called pulling it. And this is what I've seen him do. He, he's, this is what you want to do with anything. When you spray your first pass, you want it wet when it's primer. You don't want it dry. This backlight's going to be fucked up, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, you want it wet. And then just stop. Look at it. Is it what you want? This is what the gentleman was doing. I'm a, I don't know if you can see it. This is what the gentleman was doing. And he's going to run into trouble, man. He's going to run into trouble. Say this is the hood. He sprayed the hood, and then after he got done, then he went back and was just spraying little spots. No, no, make a pass. Make one pass and stop and see if it's wet. If it's not what you want, go back up over here to your paper and test your gun. Don't test it on the hood. It, 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 you cannot, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know, and he, he he pours his paint out of a can. I'm not even gonna get there, you know. Under I see why. Why Pete at Southwest Riding Custom used to get upset with me because um, he would try to explain to things with me and I try to kind of argue with them. I didn't mean to, but um, I wasn't comprehending what he was saying and I wanted him to prove to me why he does it. That was my mistake because I should have just listened. Because I see why he would get irritated with me because the same thing I'm getting irritated is you got these guys that are trying, but you guys, if you're going to ask us a question, do it that way. Not that we're gods, it's just we're not going to bullshit you. But to start spraying in the center of a hood, spraying the hood and pull back, and then your gun's not adjusted while you're doing it, that's no-no. You want to you wanna adjust your gun all the time up on a piece of paper. Because if, you, if you're having problems shooting primer, you're going to have problems shooting metallic, especially if it's light, like a misty green, just my opinion. I don't mean to be a dick, but
Anyway, it's nice out today. My wife says I'm bipolar. Hey, I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, I'm really hesitant about bringing the bike in here because I'm not a chopper builder. I'm not. I'm not a chopper builder. I'm just, I'm just like anybody down the road, man. Um, that's why when negative things are said about me, maybe you guys think I got an ego. I ain't got a fucking ego, man. If I had an ego, I'd be bragging all the time and I wouldn't be trying to explain shit. But hey, you know, <laughs> it's all good in the hood. You see the floors, you know, I don't know if that was a smart move on my part either. I'm gonna have to wait until it's really warm. Cause see how we got buckles? A lot of buckles. And this stuff actually holds water in. It hasn't rained for a couple days. Oh, and I do, I do got a rant. It's not a bad rant, but it's a rant. And you can take it for what it's worth. HRP. You know, you say leave comments, questions, stuff. I've asked you this comment more than once. Um, question about, I feel that I underquote my shit. Maybe I, I quote it high. I don't know for my area. But I see the jobs that you're getting in, like the truck you're doing with the rocker replacing the whole thing. I just wonder what you're quoting for that because that's a big fucking job. I already told you what I would quote it. I just want to see if I'm high, I'm low. What am I? Um, it's it's kind of kind of bullshit to ask for comments and then you don't answer the questions. I mean, fuck it, I won't ask no more. Is Todd coming out? You know, it's like when I ask a question, it's because I don't fucking know. Because that's why I don't feel I can ever go on business because I, I quote shit too low. Way too low and I had too many hours into it and then I get pissed off at me for quoting shit too low. Maybe I'm too slow. That could be. That's why I started watching YouTube videos. Um, there is things that I've learned about um, Shantez Shan's tech. I wish you would do a lot more videos because he was showing me how to shrink metal. And I actually got that fucking gun and that little tip. It was a shrinker. I didn't even know what the fuck it was. I didn't know it was a shrinking head. It came with direction, but it says shrinking. But I guess I'm the kind of guy that if you show me, then I'll learn. If you just tell me, then I don't pick up on it. Um, maybe because my mind's spent 24 7. Okay. Um, this was cute. Um, I'm not even going to say who left it. It said, uh, piece of property, pissy mood, hissy cats, nice tats. <laughs> that was cute. That made me laugh. Um, HRP does do a lot of videos, man. I just wish you'd answer the questions once in a while. Peace of mind, piece of property, piece of ass, piece of oneself. Piece of fucking property. And I think I might be setting my spray booth up at the end of August. But I'm not even going to say because I don't put much faith in it. With a, a guy that I know, we'll find out. Peace. <laughs>